gotta get your brain right if you're trying to make a million dollars. If you ain't gonna do it for yourself, then do it for your mama. Only stay surrounded by them people if you know they solid. Elevate your hustle up today to double up your profit. Trying to learn some game, it's every y'all gonna talk about it. No Deanna, speak that shit that everybody vouching. Ain't no more excuses valid. Get up off the couch and get up in your bag. To your bank account, need an accountant. Yo, 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 welcome back to the greatest show on earth, the Million of Mindsets Podcast. I am your host, Xavier, sitting there with the wonderful D. D, what up? What's up? How you doing today? Thank you. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling great. You know, I'm, I'm sitting at a, a different uh, angle today. Usually, I could see everything <laughs> on the screen. This is probably going to be my last time sitting right here. I could see I mean, see you want to get all spicy and switch it up. <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 right. But before we get right into the show, I would like to advise all our listeners and watchers to, pl- to please subscribe, leave that five-star rating and review. Uh, share, like, all those things. We greatly appreciate it. So if you guys could do those things, like I said, we would greatly appreciate it. And getting right into the show. So today we got another special guest. So this is going to be an amazing episode. Uh, her name is Sierra Nicole. If y'all don't follow her, if y'all are not in tune with her on social media, y'all definitely need to get in tune. This is going to be a jam-packed episode. We're super excited to have her here. So welcome to the show, Nicole. S- Sierra? <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you for having me. Don't worry. People call me Nicole all the time. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So getting so... Getting right to it. So for the people um, who this could be their first time here and they're seeing you, do you mind just giving like a, some background on yourself? Yeah, definitely. Well, obviously, my name is Sarah Nicole. I am a full-time entrepreneur and content creator. I help other entrepreneurs and creators learn how to monetize their social media, learn how to get funding in order to get equipment and run ads and things like that. So really just teaching people how to utilize this online digital space that we're in to grow six and seven figure businesses. Mm, okay. And how long, how long you been on there? Um, since 2019. Okay. Oh, you still kind of fairly, like, that's kind of fairly new recently. 2019, that's only three years. Yeah, I moved to Dallas in 2018. Okay. And I was helping my husband run his trucking company. And I learned a lot about business, a lot about, you know, business credit. And from there, I just started to get on social media. Um, I was actually going through postpartum depression after I had my daughter in 2018. And so 2019, in January, I said, you know what? I got to get out of this hole that I'm in. And so I started something called the 30 day self affirmation challenge. That was the first time I ever posted a video online. It's still on my Facebook page. If you go back, you can see it. It's kind of embarrassing, but (laughs) I was like sweating in the videos. I was so nervous. nervous. I was Mm. so nervous, but that really kickstarted everything for me when it comes to content creation and influencing. I can see that. Go ahead, Dean. I was going to say, so when you started the 30-day affirma- <laughs> affirmation challenge, like, what was the feedback like? Like, what was the initial engagement like, like, getting started doing it and giving your audience something they probably never gotten from you before? Yeah, I mean, I had amazing feedback. I was surprised um, because, like I said, that was the first time I had ever even posted, mm-hmm. like, a video on social media. I was on social media just for fun, like most people do. Mm-hmm. Um, but once I started that, I realized that people were very inspired by it. And I started to get a little bit of traction on Facebook. And so I figured, why not turn this into um, something a little bit more serious? And then, of course, once um, the pandemic hit in 2020, perfect opportunity, right? Mm-hmm. Everyone's at home on their phones. So I just said, you know what, let me just go 100% and see what happens. Mm-hmm. And I, something you said, you said when you first, your first video, you was like sweating and nervous. <laughs> and that's that's funny to me, but it's also, I think, a, a learning lesson for a lot of people is that you might see these people with big brands. You might feel like they always had was this confident yeah. and stuff like that. But I think everybody started at that point. I know I used to be, when I first started <laughs> making content, I used to be super nervous. I used to have real, I actually used to have like really bad anxiety. Like when I first started like branding myself, I, I didn't even know what anxiety was until I started doing it. I just feel my heart beating crazy. I used to be like, yo, I think I'm having a heart attack. What's wrong with me? I couldn't sleep at night. Then I originally re- realized what it was. I'm like, man, this stuff, like I'm getting a lot of anxiety like from posting. So that might not be normal for some people, but the pressures and the feeling nervous, that's actually normal. So if you're going through this and you might feel like, is something wrong with me? Nah, it's, it's and when you put yourself out to the world, you naturally going to feel mm-hmm. like, Man, you're gonna feel super vulnerable and weird about it. So that's 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 pretty um that's that's super understandable. Yeah, it's it was a challenge for sure, especially because I'm a very reserved person. Right. I'm an introvert. So people are usually really surprised when they meet me in person. It's like, whoa, like who like where is Sierra Nicole from Instagram? <laughs> you know, but um you kinda have to develop this almost like personality. You do. Um and being in front of the camera, it's difficult because there's, I mean, it's literally just a device, right? And you're talking to it. <laughs> and when you have to actually go and post it, it's like, okay, are, are people going to 
you know, be mean or what right. are they going to say? So I used to have to <laughs> film it one time, one take, didn't even watch it, post it and throw my phone across the room. Like, because <laughs> if I look at it, I'm probably going to delete it. And I just had to start to warm up and just gain more confidence. That's crazy, though, just because then when you said that most of the people I know with huge brands are introverts. But they and you would be you wouldn't think that and then you get around them you meet them they super quiet they're not that talkative you like hey I was expecting you to be how you is on social media and it's, that's not the case people know when to turn it on right. not only know that they know how to turn it on like I say that all the time <laughs> when I'm getting ready to record I be like I got to pick my energy up because I'm actually way more calm and just relaxed but on camera you can read everything yeah. that's how you yeah. got to pick your energy up <laughs> so yeah most most people with big brands at least from my personal experience are super introverted. Mm -hmm. Like people would be people would be super shocked if they knew that, and they seen like some of their biggest people they probably look up to on social media in person. They'd be like, "Man, I thought this person was gonna be turned up." <laughs> yeah. Absolutely not. What's up, D? No, that's definitely true. So, like for the people out there who are introverts and they're feeling like that fear, those pressures of putting themselves out there, what advice would you give them to help them start to develop that their pretty much internet personality and break out of that shell? Yeah, that's actually a really good question and one that I get a lot because mm -hmm. that's something that majority of people who, you like I said, wouldn't think struggle with that mm -hmm. do. Um, and so one thing I always tell people and one thing that really helped me is one, just practicing the fact that my content may not be perfect, but I still have to post it mm -hmm. because creating content is a skill, you know, and so you can only get better if you practice. So mm. if you never do it, you're never going to get better. So even if your content's perfect, even if you stutter, you mess up, just post it. And the quality of your content is just going to increase naturally the more that you work at it. And I think when it has that organic content, it makes it more, at least from how I see it, I'm like, this seems more natural. When this seems mm -hmm. real scripted and like... Yeah. Curated. Yeah, curated. It's like, it don't really be hitting the same, at least not mm -hmm. to me. The yeah. natural stuff be like, man, I, I can relate to that. They stutter like me. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, can, I can relate to that. I can relate to that a lot. But I like you said that um, creating content is a skill. Like, I, don't, I don't know if I ever heard somebody say that before. That's a, that's a very interesting way to look at it. Because, I mean, it really is. Like, you start, everybody start off bad, for real. Mm -hmm. I don't know nobody that just started off making dope-ass <laughs> content. Yeah. I don't unless know nobody. Unless that's your background. Yeah, like, right, unless that's your background. But even then, sometimes, social media creating content different from, like, mm -hmm. other platforms, like TV and stuff like that. So that's, so how, like, for you personally, was just um, creating every day is how you, like, got your skill set better? Or what, did you have, like, different strategies? I mean, just going at it every day. I've been on social media since 2019, and there's not been one day that I've missed not posting content. Oh, you posted one day. So three years, you've been posting every day for every three years. Every single day. Every single day. And I've gotten to a point now where I can, because I've gotten better at content creation, I can create content maybe once a week and use that for the rest of the week. But in the beginning, I was getting in front of the camera every single day. Mm. And what's the strategy? So is you... Like, um, are you actually creating content every day or are you making things, are you like making things uh, in a boatload and batch then creating. batch creating? Mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. like, yeah, batch creating. Are you batch creating? Yep. So now I do. Now okay. I batch create. So I'll spend a day, maybe once a week, sometimes every other week, um, depending on how good the last session was. But I'll just take a bunch of footage. Um, it can be like trends from TikTok or Instagram, right. or it can just be like B-roll footage because you can use that in many different ways. Mm. And I'll just have photos, videos ready. And then, you know, throughout the week, I'll just pick and choose some things to post. Sometimes I'll type up word posts on Twitter or Facebook and, you know, kind of I'm a pretty go with the flow type of person. Mm -hmm. um, but like I said, I just make sure I at least show up every single day. Mm. Let me ask you this, because this is something we were talking about a few days ago, the topic of um, reutilizing content that they used before. Mm -hmm. And we we're like, you know, with the audience realize that it's old content would they feel some type of way that you're you know reusing this content or is that okay is that something you can repurpose your old content and make new content out of it or should it be fresh each and every single time yeah you can definitely repurpose content i reuse content all the time um i had my baby seven months ago and sometimes i'll still post things when i was pregnant people are like whoa what's going on like <laughs> no it's old i promise <laughs> you know but you can reuse content especially because with a lot of the platforms the focus is short form content mm -hmm. and the life of your videos don't last as long so if you post something today in two months half of your audience probably hasn't even seen it so you can mm -hmm. repost it and no one's going to know that you reposted it mm, that's right mm -hmm. and Dang, no, that, that's, that, that, that's, that's definitely a fact. So I want to ask, when it comes to, like, um, specifically making content, you said you've been posting every day for um, for three years straight. So 
This is that deserves <laughs> a round of applause. <laughs> that is, yeah, that deserves a round because people don't. People, if you a content creator, you know how difficult that is. You have those those moments in your mind going blank. You feel like you, I, I'm not, I, I'm not in a creative space right now. I can't think of nothing. I don't feel like doing it. So doing it every. Day. So I, I, what I wanted to ask was, what was the? Because a lot of people they might say that's too much work. Like why? Like that's too much attention to the internet. Like why would she put all her attention on the internet like that? So what was the rewards? And benefits of that because I know uh, as a content creator, I know that's where the money is in the content. So, talk mm-hmm. about the benefits and the results of doing that for three years. Yeah, I mean, to me, it's almost like a compounding effect. Mm. So, when you're out, well, you have to outwork everyone, right? That's kind of my mindset. And so, in the beginning, when I was getting in front of the camera every single day, making new content every single day, I feel like that kind of had a compounding effect to where now I'm not having to work as hard. But because my audience has grown so much and I have such a dedicated tribe and community, it becomes a lot easier, you know? So you really just have to, you really have to show up, just show up every single day. Just show up every single day, that's simple. Yeah. And and one thing that people, they overthink it when it comes to content creation, because we see all these, you know, gurus and people teaching Mm -hmm. all these things about social media, how to grow, how to make a million dollars, all that, right? Right. But... One thing that they don't realize is that instead of trying to just say, okay, this is my only niche, right? I'm going to just focus on one thing and then try to be creative and come up with things. Content creation is really not always about creativity. What I tell all my students is that you are the niche, you're the brand, right? So you as a person, you have many different aspects of your life. Your content's going to have many different aspects of your life. So instead of trying to create all the time, and I think Gary Vee Gary v says this, but instead of trying to create all the time, just document, document. Mm-hmm. Yep. You document, and so it becomes easy, natural, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and you could just have a camera out while you naturally doing what you're doing instead of you exactly. having to think of, uh, what should I do? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. exactly, it's a nice mindset shift. But I want to ask you, like, so I feel like right now we're kind of in a space where content, being a content creator, being a full time content creator, is becoming more and more popular. Mm-hmm. But it's still a lot of people who don't really see the value in it and they're just like like why would you want to be a full-time content there's no money in it how are you going to survive being a content creator so can you talk on that like how realistic is it for someone to wake up today and say you know what i'm having a career change i'm going to be a full-time content creator and i'm going to make this work i mean there's so many different ways to actually make money and monetize being online Um, there's brand deals, there's sponsorships, there's having digital products and courses, there's having a podcast like you Mm -hmm. guys have, YouTube channels. I mean, it's literally endless. And I think a lot of people don't realize that being a content creator or an influencer is a business in and of itself. So a lot of people just think, oh, I'm getting online, it's a side hustle, or, you know, maybe I'll make something out of it, maybe I won't. But being a content creator is a business, and so you have to treat it that way. And so you can Mm -hmm. create multiple streams of income with what you're doing. So Mm -hmm. sometimes you have to get a little bit creative, but one thing that a lot of people don't realize is that these larger companies, Fortune 500 companies, they're not spending their advertising money on these big production commercials anymore. They're putting their money into people and into influencers. I just saw an article the other day saying that Pepsi, I guess, is um, taking themselves out of the Super Bowl. And that's really? like the really? biggest that's advertising the biggest advert- advent. Mm-hmm. And I can almost guarantee that they're going to be putting a lot more money into people, into content creators, because that is converting higher than these high production right. commercials and high production advertisements. So there's a lot of opportunity there. You just have to turn your mind instead of saying, I'm just a creator, but say I'm an actual business. Mm, that makes a lot of sense because the Super Bowl is only once a year. Mm-hmm. And you got people that got millions and millions of followers getting millions and millions of engagement right. every single day. Mm-hmm. Hundreds of times a day, actually. Right. So that, 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 man, how did you that think about it? That says a lot about the content creator industry in itself. Yeah, exactly. The fact that that shift is being made. Like exactly. five years ago, if you heard mm-hmm. Pepsi was dropping out to focus on content like, creators, three years ago. people would be like, what? Like, mm-hmm. you crazy for saying that. Yeah, that is. No, that, that is um, and I got two things. One, I want to say, I can tell um, you real, you, you could, well, one thing about podcasting, you can always tell when somebody is um, thorough and true to, like, they, they really do this when it comes to content creation because they just come right in. Ain't no, like, ain't no, <laughs> ain't no practice, nothing. The camera go on, say go, they just get to going, like, <laughs> speaking. So I could tell, like, oh, you do this for real. You know when somebody really do it. And I, <laughs> and I and I went and I my uh my second my second question was so 
for the people, because um, it seems like, you know, everybody on social media, everybody making content. And some people say, like, man, is this oversaturated? Is it too late for me to come on there and try to make my brand blow up? Like, what's your thoughts on that? I don't think that there's a way for the internet to be oversaturated because of how huge and vast it is. There's millions and millions of people on every single social media platform. And if you think about it, really only a small percentage of those people are actually going to be producing content, right? Like people are on there using it, scrolling every single day, but the amount of people using it is so small in that comparison. That's true. So I don't think that it could get oversaturated. That's a very valid point. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you like to the people who may say, I say to haters out there who be like, (laughs) um, why put all your eggs um, in social media and like, you know, it can end tomorrow and this can go away and you won't have nothing, your business will be over. Like, what would you say to those people or like, what advice would you also get to content creators to to prepare for something like that? Um, One thing I always say is just there, nothing is guaranteed ever. Mm -hmm. Even when I worked a job, I could have been fired when I came into work that day, you know? So there's nothing that's really guaranteed. But one thing that I tell content creators is that you have to look at your social media as a business. So you should have a proper structure and system behind it. Mm -hmm. So I make it a point to, you know, whoever is following me or engaging with my content, find a way to collect their data, their information, phone numbers, emails, so that if the internet did shut down, you (laughs) know, or Instagram shut down or Facebook, you can always reach them. So I have a database of a lot of my followers where if something were to happen, I could send them a text right now. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's big. And I want to um, talk about something or ask you about something that I seen you tweet Mm -hmm. because this is something that's very interesting. You said, stop with the freebie, lead magnets, Uh ebooks, webinars, et cetera. Uh (laughs) You said, (laughs) you said, well, you, do you want to ex- do you want to uh, just expand on it from there? Do you want me to read the rest? Yeah, yeah, I can expand on okay, that. Okay, cool. So <laughs> it's funny that you mentioned that because I get I don't say heat, but I have some <laughs> controversial. Heat is good. Yeah. No, that's good. That's good. <laughs> yeah, I have some some controversial views when it comes to certain things. Um, I've spent a lot of money in coaching trainings and mm-hmm. a lot of the things that they told me to do. Um, And they said I wouldn't be successful if I didn't do that. And I've actually done the opposite of a lot of that. Um, Like, for example, like focusing on high ticket offers. I don't Mm -hmm. focus on high ticket offers. I built my entire seven figure business off of $27 products. All your products, $27? $27. Yeah, built it. And a lot of people say it won't be successful. A lot of people say, oh, you have to have a freebie. You have to have an ebook or a webinar, right, right, to get people into your funnel. Mm -hmm. But one thing that I learned is that when you have the, you spend a lot of time, first off, creating these free products and you're attracting people who most likely are not willing to invest into the solution. That's right. And so that's why with the freebies, you might as well use that as content because content has so much more reach. Because there may be a million people who see that post and they may not do something right now, but they might do something later. But if you're only giving value to maybe a small percentage of people who give you their email or phone number, Mm -hmm. you're limiting yourself and you're really putting a cap on how many people you can reach with that information. Mm -hmm. And so I'm a huge, huge advocate for really over delivering with my content because there's so much fluff on the internet and that's one way to make yourself stand out. I've had people say, hey, you know, just from your free YouTube videos, I've changed my life or I've started my business, you know? And Mm -hmm. so people would think, well, if I'm able to do this from a free YouTube video, let me see what she's actually talking about, you know, in her paid course. And so I tell people, you know, don't be afraid to give too much value. If you're not, if you're afraid to give too much value, then you're kind of in this for the wrong reason. Mm, Mm -hmm. That is so, that's like, Everything you said is so interesting because late, lately, me and Deanna, we was having a conversation because uh, our the, all the courses I got, I just discounted them. Like, my courses was like 250 plus. Like, 200 was like my lowest, and I just discounted all of them to $47. Mm-hmm. And the reason is funny. I was in the club, so this is what really oh, sparked God. the idea. <laughs> I, was in the, I was in the club, you know, kicking it or whatever, and I was talking to someone, and he was like, hey, um... He's like, yeah, you just dropped your course recently. I was like, yeah. He's like, man, I want to buy that. He said, when I, when I get my next, um, when I get my next check, I'm gonna buy it. And I was like, interesting. Like I didn't say that to him, but in my mind, I was like, hmm. So I'm like, dang, it's only two hundred dollars. But then I was, I remember like reading articles, and I know like we 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 in a point economically where it's not the same. Like we getting pretty much, we're pretty much in a recession, and people don't have that disposable income they had last year, the year before that. So I'm like, all right. 
I'm about to switch it up, make a whole new strategy. I'm about to drop mm-hmm. all my prices to make it much more affordable people. Because when you do well for yourself, I feel like sometimes you get out of touch with reality. Mm-hmm. You be like, it's only two hundred dollars, but the average American ain't got less than a thousand dollars in their bank account. Exactly. So I had to keep that in mind. I think it's important. That's why I so double what you said. How you you built a million dollar empire just from twenty seven dollar courses. Yeah. So things don't have to be super high ticket for you to make money. You can still have, like you said, over delivered. With, with super value mm-hmm. at a cheaper price and still make money. So that's mm-hmm. that's a bit. I hope that's not going over people's heads for real. That's big. Yeah. That's big. One, was, oh, one thing you have to realize is that I know, especially with social media, and it seems like everybody's making six figures. Right. Right. Everyone's making seven figures. That's what it seems like. Exactly. But that's not the reality. And so one thing that I realize is that you can become the 1% mm-hmm. by servicing the 99%. And a lot of people don't want to service the ninety nine percent. But if you create a system to where it, every most of everything is automated, you're not having mm-hmm. to necessarily do like consultations for twenty seven dollars. <laughs> right, right, I mean? right, right. But you get you have a solution at that price range, and so you're able to reach more people. Like I said, there's more people making fifty thousand dollars a year versus a hundred or more. That's facts. Mm, you're making some great points. I want to I want to touch on some more. But before we go on, we gonna go into our first sponsor really quick. Hey, you guys. Making money outside of your nine to five or your main income stream sometimes can be tough as you have limited amount of time, energy, and money. But when you invest in starting a car rental business, all of those excuses get thrown right in the trash. The car rental business is one of the easiest ways to start generating four to five figures a month in passive income. And it just got easier with the help of the car rental blueprint. The car rental blueprint provides information and systems you need to skip the headaches and get straight to the cash flow. You'll learn how to start, scale, and automate your car rental business quickly, even if you have limited time, money, or perfect credit. So click the link in the show notes and use the code MMPOD to get 50% off. And when the cash flow starts filling up your bank account, thank us later. Now let's get back to another amazing episode. And if you want to learn more about the car rental business, go check out episode 142 with special guest Brian. So well, my question was, um, so when did you, when did you release your uh, first course? Back in 2019. Oh, so 2019 is mm-hmm. when you got on social media, same time you released so thing. So three, that was a three year period. To mm-hmm. that's that's really quick, man. People, <laughs> it, it takes people 30 years to make a million from their job. So to pay <laughs> <laughs> to make a, a million just from courses in in three years, three years that's 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 really good. And I want to ask, I want to, I also want to ask you about something else that you tweeted. You said, "I'm about to give y'all another life money hack. Making videos on social media for larger companies." might just get you rich in the recession. So do you mind going on going in on that a little bit more? Oh, for sure. So like kind of how we were talking about earlier, but a lot of companies are putting money towards influencers, right? Because in order to produce a very high quality commercial or advertisement, they're hiring these large teams. It's going to cost them anywhere between 20 to, you know, 10 to $20,000 off top for a high quality, you know, piece of commercial or advertisement. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these companies are realizing that one, it's much more cost effective to work with influencers or content creators. And two, people don't want to be marketed to anymore. Mm, That's right. They don't. And so if they see a friend or someone who they feel like is a friend saying, hey, I love this product or I love this company, they're going to go check it out versus if they see an ad. Ads just don't hit the same anymore Mm -hmm. like they used to. That's true. Also, another thing to keep in mind, um, if you look at the last recession in like, you know, 2006, 2008 era, companies that actually kept their marketing budget the same versus lowered it, because, you know, when the recession is happening, people are freaking out, companies are even freaking out, and they're lowering their budgets to save money. But the companies that kept their budgets the same or they increased it outperformed those other companies by 10 times. And so the companies that are going to keep their marketing budget the same, they are going to be looking for more cost-effective ways to market their business. And so I think the recession is going to be a huge opportunity for content creators because these companies are looking for people like us Mm -hmm. to market for them. Mm -hmm. And these companies, they're not just paying you $100 a video. You can get $1,000, $5,000 for one piece of content, and they will pay that price. So That's how sure. can people or content creators start positioning themselves today to actually prepare for when companies really start going after those content creators? Yeah, so one thing is really building up a strong community. 
Um, your engagement is extremely important. So your follower count is not as important as what it used to be. It's mm. all about engagement. It's all about community. Mm -hmm. It's all about, you know, if you post this link in your bio, are people actually going to click, click it, it, right? What do your analytics look like? And so start building up that community, start building up that tribe so that once you do reach out to a company or if even if they reach out to you, but if not, if you reach out to a company, you need to be able to show them, hey, I have this audience. I think our audiences might align a little bit. Mm -hmm. I have a very dedicated community, you know, and I think they will love this product and we can both work together where it's mutually beneficial. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that. No, nah, that's uh, you give it on some uh, some real some real game for real. Cause you could definitely like I didn't had um, you'd be surprised. Like I didn't had companies reach out to me like offering me like twenty five hundred dollars to post. I mean, this one company offered me twenty five for one post. Mm -hmm. They said I get twenty five hundred for it was a um, it was a fintech company for one post. So and I don't got a hundred thousand followers on the gram or nothing like that. <laughs> so if they feel like you got some kind of influence. Or uh, or people paying attention to you, they'll, they'll and you can negotiate. I could have mm -hmm. probably negotiated more for real. Like actually, I did. They were saying like nineteen hundred. I said <laughs> <laughs> So I just thought about it. Yeah. So you could definitely, if you got some negotiation skills, you could get a lot of out these um companies because they got the bread for real. Some these companies got some of these companies got billion dollars, nine figures. You know what I'm saying? So they definitely willing to um spend some money if they feel like you have the influence. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And one thing that people don't realize too is even if you don't have that community or that audience or influence just yet, a lot of companies are looking for creators to make videos that look very organic and authentic right. to post on their social media mm, platforms. Right, right. So you can get paid as a creator just to make a video that they can post or that they can use for an ad. So mm -hmm. even if you don't have an audience, you can still make money from making videos and posting and making content. Mm -hmm. let's, let's talk about the basics of creating a community, though, because this is something that's said a lot. You know, content creators always uh, preach about create, build a community, build a community. Mm -hmm. So for the person that's listening, they hearing that, they might be like, what does that really mean? Do you mind talking about how do you actually build a community as a social media influencer? Yeah, so it's almost just like finding your tribe. I use that word a lot, having that group of people who will listen to you no matter what it is that you say, whatever, no matter what it is that you post. It's almost like having like a gigantic family, right? That you just never seen because we're on the internet, but that's really the premise of it. And so you have to treat your audience like they are family, like they are friends, or I use an analogy like saying like you're dating, right? You have to date your audience. So you have to get to know them, they have to get to know you. And so that's why it's really important to not just focus on just one particular niche and understand that you are the niche because people want to get to know you as a person. Right. Mm -hmm. If I come to your Instagram and you look like you're just a company, I'm not very interested, right? Mm -hmm. But if I go into your Instagram and it looks like you're a real life person, right? You have a life, um, you're posting things that you're interested in, it's not just business all the time, mm -hmm. you're a little bit more approachable. And so that's going to allow people to actually want to engage with you. And you honestly only need a thousand true fans. I don't know if you mm, guys heard I, of that. I read the article. Yeah, <laughs> a thousand true other. fans. Yep. And you can be literally set for life. So that's you have right. to just focus on building that community and building that tribe. But the main thing is just understanding that your social media and you are the actual brand. You are the, you, you are the brand. You are the brand, yep. And I like that you said that because I know some of the biggest influencers that I see on social media, if you go through their comments and you read like what the people are saying, it's they're connect talking to them as if it's family for real. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, cousin like or look at my niece doing this yeah. and that. Yeah. And it's like, you like, damn, all right. <laughs> like I see them whole time, no blood mm -hmm. relation, no nothing. But they've fallen in love with the person mm -hmm. and the brand. And now it's just like, you are family to me from my perspective. Mm -hmm. But something I see you talking about on social media, um, kind of you already hit on it a little bit, but you said that you invested a lot of money in coaching. And I saw that you said you spent over 100K mm -hmm. in investing in coaching just for you to do the complete opposite of everything <laughs> that you learned from your coaches. So with that experience, do you still have a positive outlook on like hiring coaches or getting mentorship from elsewhere? Or do you think it's not worth it? Um, I think definitely I am 100% in investing in your education. Um, a lot of people talk about going to college and, you know, getting these student loans, but a lot of people don't realize even if you don't go to college, you still are going to be investing money into your education right. in some form. I've probably spent someone's tuition in half, you know, just an education outside of traditional school. Um, so, yeah, I'm still very much for 
coaching mm -hmm. and training. One thing though, is that you want to make sure that you're still staying true to yourself. And if something's working for you, why recreate the wheel? Mm -hmm. That's one thing that I kind of got stuck on, um, especially last year. Cause like I said, I was hiring all these coaches. They were telling me you can't do, don't do the $27. You know, you have to have a high ticket or you're not going to grow. And I'm like, okay, fine. I'll create high ticket. I'll do that. And I realized I actually hated it. I hated why, it. Why, why did you hate it? Because I like, I like helping people who are starting at zero and get to a higher point. Sometimes when you're dealing with high ticket, they're all they're, they're already, already at a certain point. Exactly. You know, I love seeing that light bulb go off in people mm -hmm. or making you can make I feel like so much of a bigger impact on people who maybe only have that twenty seven dollars. And then when they purchase that course and like, wow, I use this course to make ten thousand dollars this month. Like that's mm. huge to me. Mm, I like that. And so that's why I, I just decided to stay true to what I knew what worked. Knew worked. Mm -hmm. And with my audience, I had already pretty much prime my audience to what I was already offering right. and the type of people that I was attracting. So it's not impossible to sell high ticket, depending on what you're doing. It's not impossible. But also one thing you have to realize is that what comes with having a high ticket offer, you have to provide that level of service in your business. Mm -hmm. And me, I wanted to create a business where I could eventually step out of it. And with high ticket, that comes a little bit more difficult. That's why I like having everything automated because I don't want to be working for myself anymore. It's like a job, right? Yeah. I quit my job for a reason, you know? So I realized that a lot of what these coaches were saying, they were going based off what was working for them. And so take the meat, leave the bones type yeah. of thing. So if you mm -hmm. do hire a coach, take what works for you, but don't be afraid to try new things because what works for your audience can be completely different from theirs. Mm -hmm. I like I, I like that. And I want to I wanna, um, ask you this, when it comes to social media and building a brand, how important is being controversial in all of this? <laughs> um, it's pretty important. <laughs> it's pretty important, honestly. Um, mm -hmm. And that's just a part of building your brand. And I tell my students all the time, the two main, okay, there's three. There's three pillars of content that have gone viral, not almost every time, but every video that I've had gone viral. I think in the last year, I went and counted all my video views, I've had over 100 million views on videos mm -hmm. across all platforms in the last 12 months. Mm -hmm. And there's three categories, either education, where you're dropping like major game and mm -hmm. people are sharing that, controversial content mm -hmm. or humor. Yep. So those are the three. And those are the three things that a lot of people kind of shy away from because you think you have to be like suit and tie professional in order to mm -hmm. be seen seriously as a business person. Exactly. Um, but it's like total, it's the complete opposite. But being controversial, that's another part of really building up that community because then you're going to find people who agree with you on those different aspects. And then you're going to have the people who are angry at yeah, you. Angry yeah. But then they're going to be <laughs> And they're going to comment and share they're it. They're going to comment, they're going to share it, they're going to be talking <laughs> mess, right? Yeah. But that's giving you more reach. So touching on controversial subjects, as long as it still aligns with like your values or whatever you you want your brand to represent, I say do it every time. You mm -hmm. just, <laughs> I a thousand percent agree with you. I know uh, how I, this is how I, because um, people always ask me, they'd be like, man, Twitter is so hard to build an audience on there. How did you build a Twitter audience? And this wasn't even intentional on my part. I was saying things that everybody else viewed as controversial, but to me, it was, I thought this was. I thought everybody thought like this. I got on Twitter taking my tweeting my regular thoughts. I'm like, I thought every they was like, they, I used to go viral all the time. I'm like, yo, I can't believe this is going viral. This is like simple stuff to me. But I also remember like with Instagram podcasts and all the TikTok and stuff. I remember talking to someone, and he was like, man, at the end of the day. This, enter this is entertainment at the end of the day. Whether we kicking game or they giving motivation, it's entertainment. It's social media. So mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you have to be polarizing to some degree. Whether people agree with you or disagree with you, it's all good. But what, what you want for real is you want people, if they agree with you, you want them to passionately agree with you. Mm -hmm. If they disagree with you, you want them to passionately disagree. Because that's <laughs> what, like, like, Sierra, like Sierra said, that's going to make them leave that comment. That's going to make them share it. Mm -hmm. That's going to make them tell a friend. And they're gonna be like, this you wanna make you wanna make people feel something when yes. you're making content. Mm -hmm. You don't want them to just see it and be like, don't feel nothing, Chris. You want them to be like, I can't stand this, <laughs> or I love this. Like, this is so dope. You gotta make them feel something. So mm -hmm. that I, I really think that's like one of the most important keys when you talk about growing a brand or anything, is you have to, you have to, I feel like I've never seen a I've never seen a brand that was super successful that was agreeable on everything. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to, but so many people be scared to 
really they feel like I'm gonna get canceled or people not gonna like this, so they don't really really speak their mind. And I'll be like, this is why your brand not growing because you really not sharing your thoughts. Those thoughts you got is so many other people out there that you might think is crazy that agree with that. Mm-hmm. As long as you're not saying something too, all you know. Sometimes right. people, sometimes <laughs> people go too long. far. They go too far. Yeah. But you know, so if you if you know, you know when you're going too far or not. But it's those thoughts that you feel like I can't say this. It's somebody that agree with that. You got to be. Sometimes you got to be brazen enough to be like, I'm gonna speak my mind for a second and whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but it's gonna be flack that come with it. But that's you're gonna get hella followers, <laughs> yeah. monetization, all that is gonna come with it. You just got to be. Um, might be scared to do it for real. Yeah, you you can't be scared, and like you said, it is. A, there is an entertainment factor that comes mm. with social media. Yep. People laugh all the time when I tell them how I even originally blew up on TikTok because that was the first platform to really like. Right. I had millions of views. I was doing the dance trends, which I'm not a dancer. Okay, I was doing <laughs> the dance trends, but I was putting educational content on top of it. And so, of course, there are people like, okay, you're a clown. Like, how am I supposed to take you seriously? You but then on the other side, there's people who really learn something from it. And then all my other platforms start to grow from there. So you do have to sometimes go against the grain. Mm. One thing I also tell people is that your brand personality does not have to necessarily match your real life personality. Mm. Mm. That's important. That's important. Yeah. So mm. you have to think of, okay, who is my, like, who is my target audience? So when it comes to controversial topics... Sometimes you may, and I don't know how to sound, say this without sounding like terrible, because <laughs> right, 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 right. you always want to be authentic to yeah. yourself exactly. right, and your morals, but sometimes there are topics where my brand personality might have a different view than me personally, mm. but because of who my audience is, my brand personality has to speak on it in this way versus how I would a, personally feel about it. That's real. So you that's have a, to kind of have game. that separation a little bit. Mm-hmm. I would agree 100%. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. 100 And I feel like that we have those situations. We have those situations plenty of times. For the sake of the brand. Right. Like, we can't, we can't say <laughs> we that. We're going to do what we got to do. <laughs> but, that's, but, but you, it's one of those things, like, um, keeping when keeping the real goes wrong, as they say. Yeah. But, yeah, so you got to, but that goes back to what you said in the beginning. Like, you got to understand that, you're, that um, your brand is a business. Mm-hmm. So, that is super important to keep that in mind like you sometimes you don't want to go too far out there you right. got to keep in mind like all right i got something bigger at stake here mm-hmm. i don't want to go <laughs> this not worth me going off the wall for this right so that's, <laughs> no that's important for real and that's mm-hmm. something i think you you said um don't let your ego mm-hmm. kind of get in front of mm-hmm. your brand i seen you saying i can't remember which post it was exactly but that's something yeah. you were hitting on because a lot of people let their egos yeah. get the best of them and they ruin a brand or they start saying the wrong thing so mm-hmm. you gotta keep it in check yeah that's, <laughs> no, that's that's facts and i also um i read something last week it, 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 they did a new study and they said now um humans now have a shorter attention span than goldfish they said goldfish How? attention span is eight <laughs> seconds and they said <laughs> this is they, this is they, this is they this is what they said. They said the average human has a seven second attention attention span compared mm-hmm. to eight seconds for a goldfish. Mm-hmm. And obviously they going that got a lot to do with social media, us yeah. scrolling so fast. So mm-hmm. with that being said, my point is like if you're making content, that's another thing. Like as soon as I read that, I immediately thought about social media. I'm like, damn, if the average attention span is seven seconds, when I make my these videos and stuff now, it gotta be straight to it. Yeah. Cause I know every time I watch a content now. And I'm trying. I'm. I'm like, get to the point, man. Yeah, yeah. They could be. They could be twelve. <laughs> mad. They could be twelve seconds. They could only be twelve seconds in. I'm like, man, get to the. Oh, scroll. Yeah, you take it too long, man. But you see, that's why on TikTok it was a big trend lately, where it was like everyone, all the content creators were saying, use this seven second sound, mm-hmm. make a video, put a bunch of words on it, and yeah. now you get pe- You force them to stop so mm-hmm. they can actually engage read the with the and post engage and read it. it. But yeah. that was a big thing. They're trying to limit like a lot of videos to seven seconds. Yeah. So speaking of platforms, though, which one would you say, I ask all our content creators this, but which one would you say is either your favorite or the most valuable for people to be on? Mm, that's a good question. Um, and I hate answering this question because <laughs> I say all of them. Right. Okay. But I kind of do the most. So I want to be everywhere. Like anytime someone opens up their phone, I want them to see mm-hmm. my face. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, but some people say, oh, that's too much. I can't do it. Um, but it really just depends on who your audience is and where they, you know, hang out at. Mm -hmm. So if you're someone who is targeting companies, you want to be on LinkedIn, right? Mm -hmm. But if you're someone who's targeting women, then maybe you need to be on Pinterest and Instagram. So it just depends on who you are targeting and where they are typically hanging out. But for me, like I said, I like to be everywhere. And a lot of people don't realize you can use the same content 
on every single platform, mm -hmm. right? So say you make a YouTube video, take a clip of that, put it on Pinterest, put it on TikTok, put it on Instagram, put it on Facebook, because there's different people on each platform. Mm -hmm. mm. Do you yeah. recommend tailoring um, the content for each platform specifically, or just go ahead and post it? If your audiences are different on the, each platform, then yes. Mm -hmm. But if they're the same, then just post the same thing. Mm -hmm. Like for me, my audience on LinkedIn, what I'm trying to do with LinkedIn is a little bit different than what I'm trying to do on Facebook or Instagram. My content on YouTube is a little bit different than my content on Instagram and TikTok. Right. So there is a little bit of a difference, but it's because I'm trying to do different things with each platform. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you you said you got, a, well, 100 million uh, views this year mm -hmm. across. So that's a lot. So what would you say? Cause like you said, that's a skill. That's just mm -hmm. not. That's not something by accident. That's not somebody. Someone just got their camera and get a hundred million views to do that <laughs> and get. That means you got videos of millions. You got consistently videos of millions and millions of views. So that's something that. That's the intent behind that. That yeah. strategy oh, yeah. behind that brains all that. So my question is, what is if you could, some quick game. You ain't got to give away all of it. <laughs> but what would you say is the um some key things to get those views that interaction when you release that content. Yeah, so the main thing is kind of how we talked about earlier with the entertainment factor, right. um, the controversial factor, or education. So, mm -hmm. like, say you drop, like, some major game about something, people mm -hmm. are going to share that. So, those are the main thing. Like, all of my videos have gone viral had to do with something of one of those one three of those topics. Things. And one thing that a lot of people don't realize is that everything you post has to be intentional because I've seen it to where... People will post about their brand, they're building up their brand, their business, and, you know, posting their typical content. And then they'll post something completely off and random and have, like, nothing to do with no, their audience. Nothing. That will go viral. And then they're like, okay, why am I not either gaining followers, even though I have a million views, or they gain a ton of followers, and then they wonder why their engagement goes down. It's because you're not targeting your audience. So what you have to do is, no matter what, your content still needs to be in the frame of who you have, always have to think about it and look at your content from the lens of who you're trying to target mm -hmm. and don't really stray away from that. And then focus on, like I said, controversial, educational, and entertainment factors. And you are eventually going to get something that hits. It may not be every post, but that's why it's so important that you post as much as possible. Because mm -hmm. someone who posts 100 times, you have a higher chance of at least one post you know, going yeah. viral versus if you only post 10 times, you're lowering your chances by so much. Mm. Mm -hmm. And with that being said, somebody may listen to this and they be like, going viral, going viral. Because some people just see it like, because a lot of times when stuff go viral, it's stupid stuff. So mm -hmm. some people may not see like, why, they may think, why is that important? So talk mm -hmm. about you making that content with the intent to go viral. Why mm -hmm. is that even important? You know what I'm saying? I mean, Grant Cardone says the person with the most attention makes the most money. Makes the most money. So if you don't have the attention, not saying that you can't make money, but you raise your chances of making more money mm -hmm. with the eyes. Because say I'm a brand and I see someone who's getting millions of views on their videos versus someone who's getting 10,000 views. I might put more money behind the person who's getting a million views because that means more eyes are on oh, you, mm -hmm. you know. So that's why have going viral is an important factor. And a lot of people like to argue, argue me down on that one as well, saying, oh, well, you, don't, you shouldn't focus on going viral. Now, this shouldn't necessarily be like the sole purpose exactly. of, your con of your social media, but that is a very important factor because the more people that see you, the more you're going to grow. My husband always says expansion, I mean, exposure equals expansion. Mm, that's facts. So the more that you're exposed, the more people you're exposed to, the more opportunity you'll have to expand. That's no, that's that's so um crazy because on the way here, I was listening to a um YouTube video with the rapper Fat Joe, mm -hmm. and he was saying how like he was like I go viral every week and I'm getting a bag. Mm -hmm. He was like I'm getting a crazy <laughs> bag. He's like I'm making more money than I ever met like ever made messing yeah. with this social media stuff. He like every week I'm going viral. Like he was like. Y'all seen when I said yesterday's price is yeah. not today's <laughs> price. He's like, I made the biggest bag mm. off that. He like, come and see. So I'm like, what you saying? It goes back. He was pr pretty much saying the same things. Like, mm. going, I'm going viral every t every week. People seeing me, I'm making crazy money. These companies coming to me. They see me going viral. They want to. They want me to advertise their stuff. Now we making money together. Mm -hmm. So it is a. People may overlook that and be like, oh, that's not that important. Going viral, not that big of a deal. And like you said. It's maybe not something you should be like, oh, I'm going to go viral yeah. with this. Your soul focus. But eyes, eyes is everything when it yeah. comes to business. You ain't got no eyes on your business. 
You're not making no money. You're gonna be hard. It's, it's gonna be so hard for you to make money, out of it, especially with it's so it's so it's so many people online. It's gonna be hard for you to stick out. So you gotta make that content. I say you wanna say something. No, I was gonna say so. Like when it um comes to making money online, because we've talked about a couple of different things. But can mm-hmm. you just go ahead and list it out, like for the people who are listening? These are the different ways that, as a content creator or business owner, that you can make money online. Yeah, definitely. Um, So as a creator, as an entrepreneur, making content on social media, you can drop digital courses, digital products, eBooks and things like that, trainings, coaching. Um, You can have sponsorships Mm -hmm. from brands. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't realize that, say I'm having a course or a workshop, I can have a brand sponsor that workshop Mm -hmm. and pay me to have their logo say, hey, me and this company, we're launching this workshop, right? Um, I can have brand sponsorships, I mean, brand partnerships where I'm advertising, you know, a product, a particular product for them. Affiliate marketing, where you don't even have to create a product. You're just saying, hey, Mm -hmm. I use this software. I think you'll like it. Sign up with my link and you'll Mm -hmm. get paid off of that as well. I mean, there's so many different ways. Even platforms itself are paying you like YouTube. I tell everyone, if you're not on YouTube, especially as a business owner, you're really, really missing out because you're basically getting paid to market your brand and market mm-hmm. yourself mm-hmm. because with the AdSense and their yep. companies are paying money to put their ads on your videos. So there's a huge opportunity there. Mm-hmm. They have the Reels bonus where um, Facebook and Instagram, they're paying you yeah. for that. And then there's also another side of it that a lot of people don't really talk about, but investors and venture capitalists, they're now putting money behind influencers and creators. Well, they'll pay you some money up front in exchange for some of your future revenues from your content. Okay, that's so great. there's what? huge opportunity, yes, huge opportunity to raise that. capital, to make money, make more cash flow just by posting on social media. That's crazy. That's and really we, crazy. We're in, we in, we in crazy times, but I yeah. want to talk about something that you, um, I seen the video you made. This is probably a while ago, I think. You said, you said um, charge, your wor- charge your worth culture is keeping you broke. Uh, mm, we gotta we gotta touch on that. So, just just break that down for the for the people that's listening and be like, what does she mean by that? Yeah. So I say that because especially online entrepreneur gurus, right? We always talk about charge your worth, right? Like raise your prices. Yesterday's mm-hmm. price, not today price, right? But there's nothing behind that to back it. And nine out of ten entrepreneurs, especially in today's age, they don't do any research. <laughs> They don't do any research and they don't take time to build a brand that's going to be worth the price you want to charge, right? There's a reason why people will say there's two pairs of shoes. One is Skechers, no, no shade to Skechers, but one is, one is Skechers, one is Gucci. People will pay for the exact same shoe with the Gucci logo on it because one, it raises their status because of the brand that they've built. Two, I mean, a lot of their stuff is pretty high quality, I mean, from my experience, Mm -hmm. but because when people wear it, someone's going to look at that and be like, okay, they have Gucci on, they might, they might be somebody, maybe nobody, but they might be somebody, Mm -hmm. you know, so it raises your status because of the brand that they've built over decades. So a lot of people want to charge Gucci prices, and then they don't even invest a thousand dollars in their business. Mm. They want to charge Gucci prices from day one. Exactly. Gucci been out since the early 1900s. <laughs> Thank you. With no credibility, with no testimonials, with no mm-hmm. track record, with your branding doesn't even look like it's worth that much money. So I say people are going broke trying to charge their worth because they're not willing to trust the process mm. of getting to that point. Sometimes you do have to charge a little bit lower. And then also do some market research. Mm-hmm. Look at what other people are offering. If you are a commodity, you, you're going to have to charge commodity prices, mm. right? Because if I can go to you, get the exact same thing from somebody else, then what, what's making you special, right? A lot of people don't differentiate themselves. Mm-hmm. They're not offering something that is like, wow, okay, I know I can't get this from anyone else, so I can't compare it. So you have to look, take a look at yourself and your own business and say, what can I do to differentiate myself to where I can charge the price that I want to charge? But it's not really based on how you feel. It's more so based off if the numbers make sense. Because your experience... I mean, the value that you bring, that's priceless. No one can really actually afford you. Mm-hmm. So you have to go based off who your audience is, what the market is, and mm-hmm. what you have to offer. That's so much game. Because he, when you when you ask anybody, when you're going to say, let's be real, you ask anybody, what you think he's worth? Everybody going to give an outlay at this number. Mm-hmm. 
I think I'm worth ten thousand dollars an hour. Right. Like, why? Yeah. It's not gonna be a real you know, logical answer as to why. It's gonna mm -hmm. be just because I feel this way. Exactly. So when people, you're right. When people do release these things or the services, products, and people saying, "Man, you need to charge charge your worth," they will say, "Okay, let me charge five hundred dollars." Meanwhile. Mm -hmm. They ain't never sold no five hundred dollar product before. Exactly. They ain't never launched no five hundred yeah. product before. They ain't even got five hundred followers. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, who was about like, what did you get this number from? So use that's some game. Like you gotta, like you said, research is gonna have how you be, get that answer mm -hmm. and, and stand in tune with the people that are following you. And then you can build yourself up, like you said, Gucci. You can't charge these Gucci price. Gucci been out since the mm -hmm. early nineteen hundreds. Right. Yep. And and they elevated, they 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 associate their brand with a certain status level, all yeah. those things. So you can't just see that and be like, it's good to aspire to be that, but you gotta mm -hmm. you ain't gonna be able to do that overnight as soon as you launch. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It just don't work like that. You gotta have some but most people ain't got that patience to 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 grind it out and wait all that time to get to those prices for real. They don't, but most people don't make it past a year or two in entrepreneurship either, though. That's facts. Yeah. That's, and that's yeah. probably why. I'm pretty sure that's a big part of it. But also, like, to piggyback on that, I feel like people need to be more honest with themselves. Right. Because a lot of people, you want a side hustle. Mm -hmm. You don't want a whole business. And I think a lot of people don't know how to diff different, different the different two. Rate. Yeah. Different, different. And I can't even say I know. That. It's, it's <laughs> a bad day for the words. But <laughs> they need to be able to just be honest with themselves. Like, mm -hmm. are you just trying to have a side hustle? Are you just trying to make some money on this hard? Do you actually want to have a business that stands the test of time? But exactly. And they want to get rich quick. Let's be honest. They say, That's a fact. I can make a $1,000 product. I said to 100 people, That's $100,000. This is how people think no, when, they, when, they, when, they, when they launch <laughs> yeah. things. They think like, this, I'm gonna make some twenty five hundred. I get this amount. This is gonna be two hundred fifty grand. So easy, easy. easy. That's a, this is how people think with no with really no like reasoning that. behind why they gonna set this price. But mm -hmm. that that shows like um that shows that you're really in it because you got the twenty seven you got twenty seven dollar products. When you got products at that price, you know I gotta sell a, a substantial amount of more, which mm -hmm. means that I have to do a substantial um like more like when yeah. it comes to producing content mm -hmm. working hard so that shows that you really in it and mm -hmm. you just not on some get rich quick scheme type of stuff because mm -hmm. that's that's how that, and that's that's the culture right now come up yeah, with a product 999 dollars i sell 100 i got if i sell 10 i got ten thousand dollars overnight right. but see i also feel like the problem is people are marketing that is so easy mm -hmm. like they get on here a lot of these gurus and stuff and it's like you could do this overnight yeah. by my course and i'll tell you how to do it overnight and you but i feel like people need to be more honest in their courses and yeah. with their marketing and let people know like this is really what it is and not just trying to set people up for failure yeah. and having these unrealistic expectations you're right yeah. and, and i just want to say this real quick what i'm saying for the people that's listening i'm not saying you can't sell a thousand dollar product a twenty five hundred dollar yes. product you can definitely do those things but you need to have a when you do that, you need to have a history. You need to have a, a crazy amount of experience and and, and social proof that you credentials and living proof that like what you selling, you did these things on right. a high level. So you 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 got enough experience to sell something that's a thousand dollars, two thousand dollars because it's worth it. Mm -hmm. So, but if you but a lot of times people doing that today when they, they six months, yeah, and like a thousand dollars, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's that's the game. That's, that's really the game for real. But I want to, um, I, I only got a couple more questions before you, uh, before we wrap up. So what do you see, um, long term when it comes to this industry, you talk about social media and content creators and being a social media influencer, what do you see? Cause things are changing like so fast. Mm -hmm. So where do you see this going? Like long term, five, 10 years from now, where do you think this industry will be? Um, I really see it. And it's kind of the shift is obviously kind of happening now. Um, but influencers are becoming the new celebrity. That's right. So I've seen, I mean, you can go to someone who's super established, like Denzel Washington. There are 19-year-olds with larger platforms than someone like him. Mm -hmm. So influencers are really becoming the new celebrity. And we're really moving into that creator economy where a lot more people are going to be working for themselves and doing things online. Mm -hmm. And I think it's going to go a step even further once we get more into like the NFT space and, mm. you know, metaverse and all that. I think there's going to be an opportunity there as well. I don't know exactly what that's going to look like just yet, but I know that the shift is happening 
right now as we see it. Um, and I think that if you don't get on it, especially if you're a business owner, then you're going to get left behind. No question. Mm -hmm. Unless you're already rich and wealthy. You'll right. Be fine, you don't have to worry about you it. You don't have to worry about right. it. Did you see the video with um, Kanye with the TMZ recently? No, I didn't. So it was, a, uh, they, they, you know, he always at the airport and stuff and they ran up on him. And uh, he was telling them, he was basically saying like, um, I should be making money. He's basically saying, I'm paraphrasing. He's basically saying, I should be making money when y'all come and make, because y'all make these brands off mm -hmm. of us as celebrities' mm -hmm. content and putting it out there and making millions and billions of dollars. Mm -hmm. He's like somewhere like an NFT. He's like, I'm about to figure out, like, we, here's what he says, like, <laughs> we about to figure out how we going to continuously make money off the content that y'all put out from our brands. And I was like, whoa. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, he's not wrong mm -hmm. because these companies are making billions of dollars just following. He was like, y'all pop up behind trees and just get to record me <laughs> right. and release this content and make money. He right. said, I should be making money off that. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, damn, that is. Yeah. So this, the space is, it's so, it's like, it's, um, it seems like it's been a while, but we still like new in this right. space, we right? It's the beginning. We are still in the beginning, even though um, the first kind of era of influencers started with YouTube back like, right, I don't I know, 10 like plus 10 years, years ago, ago yeah. right? And so then it kind of grew into the Instagram, but then we have TikTok. TikTok is still ex extremely new compared to the other platforms. Mm -hmm. So we're still in a very new era of the content creator, the influencer, especially because he, it, an influencer looks a little bit different than it did about 10 years ago, mm -hmm. you know? And so it's important to realize that they look more like regular people, I should right. say, right? Versus yeah. just a regular Instagram aesthetic type of influencer. So there's going to be more opportunity and one thing that you have to realize, too, and kind of piggybacking off what you said with what Kanye is saying, we should get paid for this. A lot of people don't realize that their name, image, and likeness is worth a lot of money. I mean, just look at what the NCAA just did, where athletes can now get brand deals, yeah, brand deals. based off of their name, image, and likeness. Mm -hmm. So kids are going to be starting at a very young age growing their social media platforms, especially athletes because of the opportunity that's going to be there once they are, you know, going into college and trying to get not only scholarships, but also these million dollar brand deals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, that's huge. It's huge. And some of them actually I seen, um, it's a couple I was reading about that's in high school still mm -hmm. and some in college and they are already millionaires. They already got million dollar deals. Like these big, um, high school basketball stars that got huge social media followers. Yeah. They, you know, LeBron's son already got one. He got a, um, multi-million dollar brand yeah. deal too, I believe mm -hmm. with a uh, company. So, this space is 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 endless or opportunity. So like Sierra was saying, like it's never too late. Get a get mm -hmm. in on this while the getting is good. <laughs> we don't we don't know how long. We, you never know. Stuff changes so mm -hmm, fast. You right. never know how long this stuff can change overnight. So get in while the getting good. What's up, D? I got one final question for mm -hmm. you. And um, this is something because we've had quite a few people recently come on the show who kind of started their businesses during the pandemic and it just really blew up. And now they're doing amazing things for themselves and they're in a great space. But I want to get your advice to those individuals as far as like what they could be doing to maintain that success and think about the long term and longevity. Like what are you doing personally for your business as far as keeping things stable and just making sure that you're good for the long term um one thing i would say is one making sure that you have systems in place mm -hmm. within any business whether you're you know just a content creator or if you have an actual business or selling digital products you have to have a system meaning automations um, a va if you, if you can do that but there has to be some type of system where you're not every single role in your business mm -hmm. and then number two is the money that you're making right now with your social media or with your business turn that internet money into real life assets real. <laughs> right yep. so put your money into other cash flowing businesses that don't depend on social media or put it into other assets where your money is going to compound they're going to grow because you can't just bank on one thing all the time especially mm -hmm. you know a lot of us talk about building generational wealth and things like that right that takes more than just one vehicle so you have to put your money into assets that are going to grow mm -hmm. That's facts. That's that this, 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 this been this man. I, I love this episode. But before we <laughs> before we um, wrap up, I just want to say, me and Deanna, we greatly appreciate you taking the time out your busy day, busy schedule to of come course. to the studio yeah. and chop it up with us. Like we don't take that for granted. We greatly appreciate it. But before we, we let you go, do you mind then plugging all your stuff where people could go buy your products, courses? Everything you got, where they can follow you at, everything you got, feel free to plug it. Yeah, for sure. I appreciate you all for having me. Um, and you can find me on Instagram at the underscore Sarah Nicole. You can find me on TikTok, Sarah Nicole Official. Um, I'm on Twitter, Pinterest, pretty much anywhere. You just type in Sarah Nicole. 
I will most likely pop up. And you can also subscribe to my YouTube channel. I put a ton of free content um, to help you guys grow within your own online business. So Sierra Nicole TV on YouTube. And yeah, reach out, you know, reach out to me, um, comment, send me a DM, you know, me or my team will definitely reach out. Like I said, my goal is to help people who are really just starting out. And I love to see that light bulb kind of go off when they realize their potential. So, you know, if you're struggling with even just getting started, you know, don't, don't hesitate to reach out. Appreciate it. Yeah. So and make, make sure y'all follow Sierra's tap. Yes. Like I was saying, this was only an hour. <laughs> so if you tap in, stay tapped in with her, you gonna get a lot more hours of free game for real. So definitely uh, follow her, tap into everything she's doing. And then wrapping up, D, what's your information where people can find you, follow you and all that stuff? And you can follow me on Instagram at Deanna Kent, Twitter, Deanna S. Kent, and TikTok, Deanna Kent. And I'm Xavier Miller. Y'all can follow me on all platforms, TikTok, Instagram, uh, YouTube, Twitter, everything. And also follow the Millionaire Mindsets podcast everywhere as well. And that's all we have for y'all on this episode of the Millionaire Mindsets podcast. See you guys next episode. Peace. Peace. Gotta get your brain right if you're trying to make a million dollars If you ain't gonna do it for yourself, then do it for your mama Only stay surrounded by them people, if you know they solid Elevate your hustle up today to double up your profit Trying to learn some game, Xavier y'all gonna talk about it No Deanna, speak that shit that everybody vouches Ain't no more excuses valid, get up off the couch and get up in your bag To your bank account, need an accountant